through the episode. So, welcome everybody to Carbonite Bounty BS, a Mandalorian podcast. Podcast where we're going to be talking about Mandalorian. And joining us today on uh, the Tr Nerd Cyclopedia Transcontinental Podcast Network, it's going to be me, Scott. Um, Sam. Who's next? Who wants to go next? Ken, you're next. <laughs> All right. That's Ken. And that's the Hey, how you doing? The very nimble and that's Ken. That's Tony. <laughs> Tony, uh, Tony will be joining us today. So Tony, uh, we're glad to have you. Thanks for joining us today on uh, Carbonite Bounty BS. And you know, we want to get uh, get right into it without uh, without further ado. So without further ado, I want to first, you know, I want to talk about a certain tiny little itty bitty baby Yoda, and I just want to have uh, a brief second for everyone to fawn over. Baby Yoda. So first, first and foremost, I'm gonna say, "Oh, Baby Yoda, I love you." Anybody else? <laughs> Sam. Ooh, Sam, what Baby do you think Yoda. Yep, yeah, he enjoys a frog just like the rest of us. And Tony, what do you think about Baby Yoda? <laughs> um. Yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <Yoda. laughs> That, that's been driving me nuts. It's baby Yoda. Well, look, not I mean, Yoda, like you were but... saying, I think you were saying this off mic. Tony, you despise no, you the were... cuteness? What? Tony, off mic. Well, the kid, the kid is factors You were okay. saying what was momentous yeah. about this, and that's kind of where we left off last week. So what is momentous about the inclusion of this 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 baby Yodish or baby Y? Can we just call him baby Y? And maybe is that cool with everybody? Okay, so baby Y. I like so it. What is so I like what it. is so momentous about baby, baby Y's inclusion on the show? Let me know. Yeah, what do you guys? Tony, what do you, 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 baby Y? Like, what do you think? Well, what is momentous about baby Y being on the show? Well, uh, I was mentioning this, and I can mention this now: is that the species that Yoda is is the only species that has never been revealed anywhere in any Star Wars, like. Uh, expanded universe any role-playing game any book any cartoon series anywhere we have no idea what species mm -hmm. yoda comes from mm -hmm. um there's only been one and now we see well another and that's going to be the beauty of this is like well where does this all tie in obviously there's a connection what is it we're gonna find out ideally one, one of the real coolest this, things uh you know is the expansion of the star wars universe in places that are a little bit dusty uh, a little bit dirty, uh, Ken. Um, you know what? Do, what do you think about the settings we've seen so far? What do you think about the expanse that we're, we're treated to here? Well, it's a it's a realistic prediction of what would happen after the Empire mm -hmm. is destroyed. Everything is just a mess. Everyone is now left mm -hmm. to their own devices. They can do whatever they want. Like I said in the previous podcast, the just the dirtiness of everything is just the, the lack of the organization that the Empire sort of mm -hmm. on the galaxy. Uh, so now you have this this sort of civilization that just is, you know, they're just able to run amok and they can do whatever they want. They got dirty stormtroopers hired as muscle. It's like mm -hmm. it's like gangland. Mm -hmm. Excellent, excellent. And Sam, what did what did you think about Nick Nolte's uh, appearance on the show? What did you think about the guide character? I have spoken. <laughs> hey, he's doing a good job. Oh, I, so I, 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 I like his personality. I like the way he interacts with the uh, Mandal. You know, Mando. Yes. Is that what we're calling we're him? Is that what his name is? Like, like Mando. You know, okay. It, it, who knows what kind of a slur that Mando is, uh, but we're just gonna go with it because we <laughs> haven't heard any reason not to. And until they give him a name, he's just a man with no name, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. He's it's like he's out there in the like the Wild West and everything in this ver, you know, in this um in this universe. And um, I do like his chemistry with um, you know, with Nick Nolte's Super character there. You know, and, so, and it's a character. Yeah. You know, he's a man with no name. He doesn't talk a lot. One of the neat things about him is this part of his character, uh, very similar to all the Clint Eastwood movies ever made, uh, where he is the man with no name, a bounty hunter, the outlaw. Uh, let's take a look here. I made an infographic for the show here. So if you're, if you're a viewer on YouTube, 
you are uh, going to be excited because I've got a graph up here. It's a fatality graph for this week's episode. Sam's giggling. I know he loves it. Uh, everyone take a look there. You can see it. So this week we got eight total fatalities uh, in several different uh, <laughs> genres, if you will. Eight total. So That's there were three, it? Three Jawa disintegrations. <laughs> yeah, just eight. There were three three guild members <laughs> who tried to get the jump on Mando and did a real, not not a great job. Uh, and uh, two uh, two Jawas thrown from the sand crawler, thrown from the train, uh, as I like to call it. So we had a nice uh, nice little uh, bevy. Oh yes, and let's not forget one woolly rhino. One one woolly rhino. So one woolly rhino. Mando wow. For, okay. Uh, keeping it, uh, you know, pretty clean for us overall when you really, <laughs> when you really think about it. Uh, so without further ado, let's jump into the episode, do a brief recap here, get everyone on the same page as far as what's going on. Uh, so chapter two is called The Child. That's why the thumbnail has Baby Y in it. And that's how we're going to talk about Baby Y. We're going to talk about him a little bit. So uh, we pick up right where we left off last week. Mando and Baby Y are walking toward his ship. And I just want to comment on it. Like Baby Y, you can just tell he's awesome by the way he's chilling in this floaty pod. You know, he's just relaxed, hanging out, <laughs> coming with, Man, uh, with Mando wherever uh, wherever he's going to go. Super nifty. I, I just appreciate that in the character. Um, these are This is a species that, you know, time, you know, not, there's not a lot of urgency for them, right? That's their deal, uh, you'd imagine. So bounty hunters are sent to track them, and Mando deals with the bounty hunters. There's three of them here. Uh, we get the last disintegration here. So the last bounty hunter that attacks Baby Yoda gets gets essentially melted Ken, you're a you're an EU guy, right? You read all you read some of the books and you know some of the lore and a few things there. Uh, what did you think about how they did the vibra blade effect? Yeah. How did you like the appearance of the vibra blade? Uh, by far, um, number of different characters used it. The uh, the Gamorrean guards used it a lot. Uh, that was their yep. weapon of choice. I think it's a very, very uh, simplistic, brutal, brutal weapon. I mean, because you have a blade, plus you have the laser energy. I mean, that's got to hurt. Absolutely, right? Right. And now the, the way I a vibra blade works, for those of you who are unaware, is it vibrates back and forth. And what that does is it reduces friction. It's a real, real, real uh, thing. Uh, I don't know who was – anyone who was in school in the 90s knows that there were those scissors – where you'd hold the thing and it would have like 50 batteries in it, like a mag light, you know, and then like, you like that across. Uh, so, you know, something pretty nifty. <laughs> I always, uh, was one, I always like how they, they show the vibra blades and stuff because, you know, you can't, you just have to have, uh, it's like space knives, right? You can't just have knives. Uh, although we haven't figured out a way to improve them that much, I guess. But um, so, so there are still guild members coming for Baby Y, right, Sam? So what, it, so, we have more Jeopardy for uh, Mando here. Uh, what did you think about his fighting style? What did you think about the way he dispatched the goons? I mean, you know, Mando got some skills, you know. he. Um, I like the way he pushed, um, you know. Baby Y. Ba uh, baby Y back. <laughs> <Jumping> back. <laughs> he fell back in his thing. And, and you could tell the camera's, like, playing a lot. You know, towards their, um, you know, their, their chemistry and everything. And him protecting um you know baby why right there um but yeah his fighting style was um you know it was it was decent enough um and he took those out yeah. you know took Can't them out pretty quickly um you know the aftermath of this fight uh tony what what did you think about about the way baby yoda acted when they got back to camp what was your impression with what what he was doing there well you know like just so like, you know not a very you know, urgent character, not a very urgent species. They kind of take their time with everything, you know, not really, uh, you know, going over top about everything. I mean, I'll, I'll say this. It looks like they're building the character well. I don't know if the character will ever speak. <laughs> yeah. That'll be interesting. Um, but, I mean, I like the way they're building it already. I mean, you know, obviously the world absolutely, is intrigued, absolutely. so that's a good thing. So we see, we see sort of – all right, so so we see uh, baby, uh, baby Y – he keeps walking up to the Mandalorian. He keeps walking up to the Mandalorian and holding up his hand and, 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 and holding up his hand at uh, Mandalorian's. And I'm just like, baby, why? You got to chill out. 
this is a dangerous place, and I do not like <laughs> Baby Y being out and about. He needs to be inside the pod, or she. Listen, we're not discriminatory here. Baby Y does need that's to stay true. in the pod, and that's that is because. And and for those of you that want that are uh, viewers of our other shows, such as Sam and Scott are watching Watchmen, the show where we watch HBO show Watchmen. Uh, you'll know that we have had some incidences this last couple weeks where there have been there's been far too much baby jeopardy going on. Yeah, too much baby babies jeopardy. in jeopardy everywhere We're, on these TV Sam, shows. Sam and yeah. I have come out very much pro baby, and you know, Ken, I want to give you the opportunity right now on the show to 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 come out pro baby, anti baby. Just go ahead and tell me where where do you stand on that one? Very, Very pro baby. Pro baby. <laughs> I have two. Very pro baby. <laughs> and they need to stay alive, so I'm gonna say pro baby. Pro baby. All right, Tony. What about you? How are, are you? Uh, are you a pro baby uh, type of person, or are you an anti baby person? Oh yeah, pro baby. I mean, you know, hey, it's uh, again, it set the world ablaze, even beyond the you know the, the Star Wars geeks <laughs> such as us. So that you know, it's the type of thing you gotta just love gotta it. love. That's <laughs> that is that is correct, correct, correct. Okay, so let's we move we move forward here. Um, you know. Wait, 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 wait. But what, what did you guys think about, like, well, first of all, like, how did he get out of the pod into the thing? we never seen that. We we really never see him, you know. Baby Y. Or she. <laughs> baby Y. You, you know, what 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 is what, what the movements are of how it was able to get out of the pod, you know, and just walk over there and everything. Anyway. It, but, it um, what, jumped. <laughs> it it probably did, like, seven or eight You don't even want to see what that thing can do with a lightsaber. <laughs> it's quite, it's quite. Uh, it's quite terrifying. Uh, but uh, but what did you guys think about? Um, I mean, essentially what what we know already, you know, in universe and everything. Right. But Mando didn't know um, about him about to try to heal. You know, he was attempting to try yeah, to heal that's Mando. Definitely right? what I was getting from that. Definitely a force a force heal sort of situation. Uh, you know, Baby Yoda is. I'm sorry, Baby Y. That's my own name. That's my own name. I can't say it. That's why this is again not professional. Uh, so we're proud of that too here. Uh, so Baby Y keeps walking over to the Mando, holding up his hands. He needs to chill out. Uh, I think he's definitely trying to heal him for sure. I think he's definitely force sensitive. I think that's something that, you know. And let's be clear about this. We know from the prequel trilogy, which is real, we know that. 50 years ago, what they would have done with a Force-sensitive child is scoop him up and take him to training or somewhere. They certainly wouldn't have done nothing. And the odds of this child being discovered now, uh, in the last five years, are probably pretty limited, right? That we're probably looking at a, you know, a youngling, so to speak, of the Jedi Temple, right? Is that what you guys are getting? Yeah, what do you think they're telling? Well... That's going to be the interesting thing of, you know, whenever Mando was hired for this endeavor, um, you know, where was Baby Y found? Uh, who knows about Baby Y? What is the reason that, you know, they're hiring Mando to get, you know, so there's a lot of questions. We have a while to go. We have to find That's out That's absolutely a lot more. the case. All right. So, so Baby Y and Mando get back to uh, Mando's ship. And the Jawas have stripped the ship bare, causing a very <laughs> violent confrontation uh, between uh, between Mando and and the Jawas. And you know you can kind of understand uh, you know what he's getting at here. Um, to you know to show you here back these are disintegrations that happen here <clears throat> right up front, and there's three of them. Boom, 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 right here. Bang, bang, bang. Sniper rifle totally obliterates three Jawas. And then the land crawler gets rolling. Mando just really can't take it down, so he decides to climb aboard. Now, now, Sam, what movie did this remind you of? This little piece right here. Oh, uh, something from Spider-Man One. Ken, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Yes. Indiana Jones. Indiana yes. Jones. Raiders of the Lost Raiders. Ark. Uh, no, not Raiders. Actually, we're talking about Last Crusade here, boss. Uh, we're talking about Indy. Well, maybe we're talking about a couple different scenes, but we're definitely talking about Indy and the World One tank uh, getting driven into the valley, right? We're talking about the same scene. That was in Crusade. That was in Crusade, right? Am I being yeah. just an a hole, or was that not in Crusade? It was in Crusade because because Marcus Brody's in the tank. So anyway, 
And it's that. You know, wait a minute. All I all you, I know is I think you, it's so you, cool that he he um he 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 does that thing with his um arm, and then the yeah. uh, the rope comes out and everything. You know, I just, I mean he he has so many the weapons. In his is arm. like, you know, the, the Mandalorian. Perfect. He's got he's a walking arsenal, right? We see that a couple times here. Super duper nifty. He throws yeah, he, yeah. he throws some Jawas off the uh, <laughs> off the speeder here. Uh, you know this confrontation. My favorite shot of this is that is, is they cut to Baby Y just sort of floating along, just chilling, flying, <laughs> flying right next to yeah, this life yeah. and death fight. No, it, yeah, I mean the Baby Y is in the air and everything, and just following right along, no bumps or anything like that. I yeah, I love the way that was um that was that was filmed like and, that. And we wake you up know. next to a concerned looking Baby Y, who, uh, as we know is uh, really rather good at uh, healing people and or doing something else. All right. So after realizing he can't catch he can't catch up to him in his current state, Mando returns to his ship to survey the damage, and it is stripped bare. I mean, even the toilet that we got to see last week, gonzo. No toilet at all. And I don't know how you're supposed to have a ship without a toilet. Go uh, on. That's uh, something I think are... are <laughs> and the engines are also inoperable. And then uh, did you guys catch this shot... Uh, where uh, Baby Y comes on the ship and kind of looks at him like, like this, really this, this, this is your ship. Yeah, yeah, that was that was crazy. You know, I mean, Baby Y and his um intelligent so far. All right, and what did you guys? <laughs> let me go ahead and pull this up for you here. This is just a real quick, real quick little mock up that I found here. So this is the Mandalorian ship in its normal status. So. Uh, it is a Mandalorian gunship, as you can see here. Cargo hold there in the center. So very, very nice. Just wanted to kind of give a little bit of a, you know, anybody have a reaction to the ship in preference uh, at all? Anything? Anybody got anything on that? Uh, it's not Slave One. I mean, you're, it's going to be hard pressed to, you know, be as cool as Slave One. But anybody else? It is what it anybody is. Anybody else got a reaction to this thing? What do they call the toilet? The the refresher? Uh, I it, think that was kind of cool. <laughs> it looks. Yeah, I mean, it looks mm -hmm. it looks very republic. Looks like a republic uh, cruiser of uh, uh, or transport, like from Phantom Menace. Something they might have thrown together. Absolutely, absolutely. Something. Yeah, so something from the old days. You're right. It's an older <laughs> ship, though, right, Ken? <laughs> this is not top of the line. It's definitely Millennium. It's oh yeah, Falcon -esque. absolutely. No, this is, yep, yep, third, fourth <laughs> okay. generation. So, for so sure. Mando and the guide. Uh, we go back to uh, Mando and the guide, uh, just uh, head on, heading on out. So this guy likes to ride out of his encampment. He loves doing it with the, with the, the Mandalorian. Uh, so they ride out. They <clears> find <throat> the Jawas, and rather than taking them by force, they decide to negotiate. We find out the weapons are tied into the Mandalorian religion. And Mando negotiates with a flamethrower, which is an interesting way to to negotiate. Man, Mando's a hothead. Right? So, so Mando being an Oz head, what what did you guys think when they asked for, um, what did you guys think when they actually asked for the baby Y? Were you guys thinking that baby Y was in any sort of jeopardy here? Were you guys worried that baby Y was going to get taken away from uh, Mando? Or were you just like, nah, it ain't going to happen? Well, Mando no, wasn't no, ready to give him up. No, yeah, we need to do something no. with this baby Yoda. I don't want him getting plot armor this early, that's for sure. All right, so so they ask <laughs> him to go get this MacGuffin, the Skiga, which is an egg, right? Which we find out later, right? I'm not going to get a spoiler <laughs> alert, but whatever. So we find out about this egg, and I love this shot. What did, what did you guys, did anyone else see this shot where the Mandalorian is in the top of the sand crawler and he's just, like, sitting there, and someone looks up at him and goes... Skiga. <laughs> He's just like, Whoa. <laughs> I love the world weariness there. All right, so long story short, we go to the Space Rhino's cave, and we fight the Space Rhino. And the Space Rhino is pretty badass. Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at Space Rhino. There's Space Rhino. So Space Rhino is pretty yeah. ridiculous. Space Rhino beats Mandalorian up, and who comes to Mandalorian's rescue, Tony? Who is it? And now Baby Y just shows the amazing yes. power. So Baby Y, <laughs> Force Sensei, I mean, this just puts that all to bed, right? I mean, it's a Yumi and a wall. 
He's force sensitive, right? I mean, you don't do that sort of stuff without being force sensitive. And that's not, you know, that that's a pretty big size differential. I mean, we're talking about X-wing style differences. This baby Y is little, maybe the Rhino's a little bit littler than an X-wing, but not that much littler. So, anyway, long story short, Mando knifes a woolly mammoth to death using only a tiny knife, which for anybody else would be like a top two thing in an episode, right? Mando <laughs> just kind of gets it on. Yeah. Uh, and who? happens to get him in the right spot too you know and Sam, he goes down quick tell me tell us about what happens when mando comes back with the egg what happens oh uh, the jawas get like super excited <laughs> you know and then, and then what, what happens to the egg <laughs> who doesn't like right? the egg <laughs> What was the yolk and st- uh, was it like um like uh, uh, I can't think of the candy's name and everything, but I mean it was like yeah, a crazy Sadbury type of like, yeah yeah yeah, like- yeah 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 it was some crazy type of yolk in there you know that they were trying to eat and everything and it's, it was funny how they just slice it off just it was and much it got like a uh, Cadbury egg <laughs> is laid by a monster and supped upon by tiny tiny people uh, so. Very interesting there. Okay, so that, that that's a MacGuffin, and you know it was just designed to show us what the Mando is capable of, what Baby Y is capable of. Um, so, this was is this episode reminding you? Because I read a couple things online. A lot of people were saying that um, that this is sort of like uh, mm-hmm. playing like a video game, like you know he's completing like tasks in each episode, and you know by the time it ends, we're gonna get like to like you know a destination. Like is that is that how you're feeling so far with like you know this these these 100%. past couple episodes? I agree, and I'll tell you why because I could see this being a tutorial level. It's like get off the planet, and it keeps going. And he's like, it's like we have to get Baby Y. Baby Y is behind us. We have to follow Baby Y. Baby Y is not. I could see that being real annoying. Like uh, what they call those uh, escort missions. You know what I mean? Really, really nifty. What do you think, Tone? Um, now that you mention it, I kind of never thought about that, but now that you kind of mention it, you know, it kind of seems that way. Yeah. Well, you know, complete this task, complete this one. Um, can't wait till the next episode to see if, you know, that theory is correct, but yeah, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. Yeah. They haven't really added too many characters so far, but I mean, I like the pace is going, you know? Um, I was very well. Let's go. Let's get to the rest of the. Episode. Yeah. So, so we have the guide and, and Mando kind of travel back to the guide, uh, to the Mando's uh, ship, and there's this this montage, which just like last week, you know, I said there was a montage that wouldn't be in there if this was a movie. We don't even see this, uh, but we will see it because it is a TV show, and thank goodness for that. So we get a neat montage of Mando and the guide putting the ship back together while Baby Yoda just chills out because he's tired. <laughs> montage music by the way i don't know if anyone noticed this but did you notice that the it was like baby yoda baby yoda baby yoda baby yoda baby yoda it sounded like they were saying that the whole time mm-hmm. is that is that what they were saying <laughs> uh, so they fire that ship uh. up and then they're like hey god you want to come with us god's like no i'm an a-list name i can only be in two episodes that's just how it is for the a-listers and that's just what it's like <laughs> and mando takes off and baby y wakes up like and it's just like was was fixing the plane hard thing to do or was that like uh, a pretty easy thing to do there and, and so that that is the general uh, summary for chapter two a very short episode yeah which shocked the heck out of me um i was actually very i i, I don't know if i was shocked or pleased because i i was right. on something else after that, you know but what how, how do you guys feel about like the length of the episode you know my theory is that episode one was long because mm-hmm. it was episode one. I think they're all going to be this length now. Oh, okay. I believe. We all shall right. find out. Okay, okay. Well, that's... About that you, Ken. So, I don't think they waste a single minute. I don't think the episode is short long. I think it just gets to the point. There's no fluff. There's no... no unnecessary um character um i and i and i just want to mention because you, when we were talking about earlier talking about yes. baby y and trying to mando and him pushing him pushing it away and putting it back in the pod 
there's a very parental uh, relationship going. Because that's right. what I do with my baby. Like right. My baby comes up, and she's she, he, whatever, because I have one of each. Oh, that's good. They're trying to take or do something, and I don't understand. I, I put it back. I try and put it back and protect it. So Mando is really protecting why in a very fatherly, let's just say, uh, way. Um, and, and I think he's a, I think he, he's a leader. And I think he's a great, um, someone that, mm-hmm. that people are going to follow. So there's, there's a lot going to, that's going to happen with their re- relationship. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's good character development with very few lines. I mean, with the action that he's taken with, you know, baby <clears throat> Y and just how we've seen him just act for these past couple episodes is really good character development you know, just is just as far as just him, period. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's a really good point. There, absolutely, Ken. absolutely. And, you know, uh, one of the things we like to do here, and besides counting the bodies, besides, you know, talking about how cool the Mandalorian looks, and he, he does look cool, very, very <laughs> cool, in fact. Uh, one of the things uh, that we like to kind of, um, that we like to discuss here is the ways in which this show is a Western, right? And so, so here is some stuff that I saw this mm. week. And the first thing I want to talk about is this this trope in westerns of the wastes, right? When when you have a, a, a posse that rides out of town, right? Where are they riding to? The vastness of the waste, the waste, the waste. And that is <laughs> one way in which Star Wars is very similar to westerns in that it takes place in this in this universe where there are billions of planets and billions of stars in the galaxy. And they could literally be anywhere. And what it leads you to is this this just vast emptiness. It's like a loneliness that's present in that first Star Wars and isn't present in the prequel trilogies because George Lucas made many mistakes of the prequel trilogies. So I, I always <laughs> like to think about that. Yeah. What? Well, well, so, so, <laughs> well, 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 you, I mean, you pointed well, something um, um, out, Scott, that I thought. Um, Oh, Tony wasn't I forgot on the last Tony podcast, was busy but I, last you know, week. That's he, my bad, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a real life and stuff to do. But I'm, 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 I'm curious. I'm, I'm curious to hear his thoughts on like, um, how does this? I, I, I just plain said this kind of remind me of like, mm-hmm. you know, the um, a new hope. You know, as yeah. far as the way it began and everything with the vastness, and you get to see lots, a lot of the creatures and everything with the, um, with the grounded universe. In in the in this section looks like this what this is sort of reminded me of you know of that a little bit. I mean, what what are your thoughts as far as that, Tom? Well, you know, wherever this planet that they're in that this episode occurred is kind of tattooing ish mm-hmm. in a way. You know, there seems to be a lot of that. Yeah, the Western theme is is there. Um, I just like the fact that they're just you know going into somebody. Mm-hmm. Completely different. You know, there was such a big thing of Boba Fett is so popular, um, but a different way. I'm just not just getting into that character, right. just getting, you know, you know, someone else from his home planet. And, you know, just another way of looking at things. So, I mean, I definitely see, you know, very tattooing ish mm-hmm. so far. Um, it's going to be curious to see where it is the next episode. What planet does it take us to next? So it'll be interesting. Where indeed. As uh, it is again a vast, vast, vast wasteland, uh, even bigger than the map used in uh, Red Dead Redemption Two, the movie I didn't play very much of last year because they <laughs> killed my horse, and I'm pro horse. So <laughs> that's part of how I pro baby and pro, pro horse. Baby I know and I'm picking easy fights, but you gotta win some. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about who who Mando is now. You know, do you guys you guys watch watch westerns or are you guys into that sort of? Is this like a? Am I talking out of school here? Are you guys pretty familiar with some of the like w- westerns? You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like tropes. So this gunman, yeah. this silent gunman, is spaghetti western. Spaghetti. Yeah. So this is basically a Clint Eastwood, right? That's who Mando is. He's this ba- He's this guy. He's a man with no name. He's deadly with his gun and really doesn't want to mess with you unless he's provoked, right? Uh, th- that's something that's really neat, and and seeing those sorts of stories, which are kind of they're sort of original American stories, right? They couldn't have existed before the, that era. 
I just think it's really neat to see that a quintessentially American story type being told this way, and, and it's a real interesting pastiche and mix mash of both genres. I, I just think that's really cool, so I'm going to be talking about that myself. Who knows what infographics we'll have next week? You never know. It did not take long to make that first one, so I can we'll probably do more, right, Sam? I mean, I sure Oh, am. yeah, you're on it. And that's what you can expect here at Encyclopedia <laughs> Transcontinental Podcast Network, a podcast network that is exists all right so so this was a this was a quick episode we talked a little about the runtime my opinion is that they're doing this on purpose uh you know they're, they're they're not cutting the story where the time makes sense they're not trying to pad it too much they're cutting it where the story makes sense yeah i love the way because when i um when the episode ended i texted you know scott right after i was like that's it you know and I was like, you know, why, why did they, why, why is it so short? And he said, maybe it's just because they, you know, cut it where it needed to be cut. So like Tony was saying, um, it'd be really interesting if all these episodes are, are, you know, just in a, in a 28 to 30 minute set. And like Ken said, um, they're really just getting no, no fluff or anything like that. Just getting straight to the point and on to the next mission or whatever, you know. Um, that's, this is a really good way to tell a story, period, number one. But in a Star Wars sense, we haven't really got to, you know, we haven't really got to see this, this, um, you know, this aspect, or it's been a while since we've seen this aspect of the universe. Yes, it's all been right kings and, and queens, and, and now we get to the common folk, mm -hmm. uh, super nifty. But the universe is so big, it's like, wow, it's just yeah. so many stories to tell. Lots of, you know? lots and lots of different directions to go yeah. here. Now, Tony, uh, Sam has said it. You weren't here last week. You were busy. Mm -hmm. we, we put the Emperor in your place. and uh, You know, he's he's relinquished some of his control, <laughs> cool. which is nice. Uh, Tony, what, what so far in the first couple episodes has been your favorite thing about The Mandalorian? Um... Well, the one is that, and I was a little bit worried about this, and I, I don't want to say the mistake, but I watched the entire Clone Wars and the entire Rebels huh. animated series, and those were definitely targeted yeah. toward preteens. And you kind of start thinking, well, is everything going to be right. like that? And that's not the case for this. This is true Star Wars right from the beginning. You know, again, we have, like, you know, the, um, the body count right off the yeah. bat, so... Right that shows it's definitely not, you know, a preteen type of show. Um, I'm just liking the fact that, well, we like Mandalorians. Okay, we're not going to go with the Boba Fett. We're going to do a little bit different. We're going to introduce a new character. Um, we're alluding still to the entire, you know, Star Wars universe. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. the timeline of where it is. I don't know if that was discussed last week. That I believe this is like four to nine yes. years after Return of the Jedi. And... So mm -hmm. it's right after that. And there was a great line whenever uh, Mando's getting his first payment uh, at the bar there. And then the original payment was like, well, you know, Imperial credits. Don't you know the Empire's yeah. dead? Or something to that effect. So that kind of tells you right there where the timeline is. I like that. There was one era that we haven't really ever visited in the Star Wars universe, like right after Return of the Jedi. So that's going to be interesting how it's all going to tie. Awesome, awesome, Looking awesome. All it. right, so... That is the short week we got, Mandalorian, Chapter 2, The Child. So I uh, wanted to, to thank everyone. Before we go, before we go, before we go, not quite ready to leave yet. Um, Sam, any final thoughts? Oh, hold on, I'm going to cut this. Whoa, whoa, hold on. Mistake, mistake, mistake. Sam, any final thoughts? Hey, can't wait. To, uh, um, these episodes are coming quick. So, you know, uh, Friday's about to be on us. And, um, Absolutely. What about you, Ken? Uh, I share, share the same uh, feeling. I can't, can't wait episode. I think it's going to be Sunday night into Monday, I think, is when they're, uh, when the, when they're putting these up. Yep. Uh, so or put them out Friday. For, uh, yeah, he didn't. Friday. You think Ken Friday? Ken check the schedule. Yeah, That's they're cool. Fridays. Mm -hmm. uh, Tony, what about you? <laughs> Well, they they did the first one on a um on a Tuesday, and then the next yeah. one appeared on Friday. Friday. On you, Ken. It's yeah. okay, not mm -hmm. a big deal. Yeah. Tony, any last thoughts? 
Uh, so looking forward to it. the big thing is just the people that are not as well versed in Star Wars. I'm yeah. just tired of oh baby, Yoda. it's not, Yoda. it's not Yoda, it's not. Uh, so, I'm just waiting to see like hopefully like it'll start really getting out there and it'll be shown like this is a completely new character, so they'll all be. Uh, <laughs> Novices realize Absolutely. that this is a completely different character. <laughs> Me too. You know, I hope they name that they name that species so we can stop talking in riddles and like talking about baby wide stuff. Uh, you know, for me, exactly. super excited to see where they're going with this. Uh, you know, I love these western stories. You know, uh, me and my my grandpa used to watch westerns all the time, all the time, all the time. So you know, for me, uh, you know, this reminds me of him, makes me think about him. So I'm really, really enjoying the story so far. Uh, you know, I hope everyone else is too. And, you know, as part of that, you know, what we want to hear from you, we want you to subscribe to the show. We want you to like the show. Uh, we want you to, to check us out. Uh, we want you to come back. So subscribe so we can talk to you again after they drop the next episode sometime after Friday when our real lives settle down enough to allow us to get together to uh, talk about it. And uh, without further ado, I guess we'll cut it here and uh, we'll see you all pretty soon. All right. Peace. Nerd Cyclopedia.